Hello, Assalamualaikum. I'm Dr. Malisa Ami. I'm the resident consultant ophthalmologist at Sunway Specialist Center Damansara. Today, the topic that I'll be talking about is strabismus. In layman's term, it is known as a squint. Squint actually has two meanings. The first meaning is squinting of the eyes. Whenever the eyes are squeezed closely together like this, uh, for people who are unable to see clearly that far. But what I'm talking about today is the second meaning of squint, which is the misalignment of the eyes. In strabismus, the ocular alignment is not straight. One eye, is duplicate, one eye can be deviated either inwards, what we term as isotropia, outwards, and exotropia, upwards, hypertropia, or downwards, which is a hypotropia. In Malaysia, the most common type of strabismus is a condition called intermittent exotropia, EXO. In intermittent exotropia, the eye is deviated outwards, it's a divergent squint. This will be the focus of my talk today and I'll explain it further in the next segment. Other common causes include esotropia, ESO. This is when there is a convergent squint where the eyes are turned in. This occurs when a child's focusing power of the eye is too weak a condition we term as hypermetropia. Therefore, when the eyes are trying to focus and see things clearly, the eyes will also move in and converge and turn inwards and resulting in a squint. Another condition of strabismus is infantile esotropia. This is again another type of convergent strabismus that occur within the first six months of life. It's an important condition to recognize and to be assessed by an ophthalmologist because surgery would be advised when the baby is uh, around the age of 18 to 24 months to promote or regain the stereopsis. A quiet strabismus due to cranial nerve palsies resulting in abnormal innervation of the eye muscles or due to hyperthyroidism, that is an overactive thyroid, are also common causes of screens. However, this occurs more commonly in uh, adults and the elderly. This is a range of condition where the eyes can be divergent at certain times and are straight the rest of the time, so it occurs intermittently. This is thought to be due to problems in the fusional mechanism that maintains binocular vision. It can also be related to a defective action of the medial recti muscles, which are the muscles that pull the eye inwards. In intermittent exotropia, Initially, the eyes are straight during infancy and early childhood. Then, as the fusional control breaks down, the eye will intermittently diverge upwards. Eventually, when the control is poor, this will become a constant exotropia, a constant divergent squint. In the beginning, parents will notice that the child's eye will drift out when the child is tired or daydreaming or looking far into the distance. There may also be a family history of exotropia in the parents, grandparents, uncle, aunt, or cousins. In a constant screen, number one, there can be loss of stereopsis, that is the three-dimensional vision. Our two eyes need to be aligned to a common direction of gaze in order for binocular vision to occur. If one eye is deviated, then the stereopsis and binocular vision is lost. So children with strabismus lose their binocular vision and hence the quality of vision is less compared to someone who can see in 3D. Secondly, there may be a need for glasses. In some cases of intermittent exotropia, it can be worsened due to myopia, that is short-sightedness. Therefore, all children with strabismus should have their eyes checked for any need for glasses. The third reason is there is risk of amblyopia. If one eye is constantly deviated, that eye can become a lazy eye or an amblyopic eye. This is because the brain will choose to use the straight eye and ignore the input from the deviated eye. Over time, this suppression can lead to permanent decrease in vision in the deviated eye. And if it is not corrected within a critical period of time, the poor vision can be irreversible. This critical period is thought to be up to seven to eight years of age. However, thankfully, amblyopia is less common in intermittent exotropia, unlike the other types of childhood strabismus. Another reason why exotropia should be treated is that having an eye that deviates outwards makes someone look different from others, and this may be the cause for teasing or bullying in school-going children. 
As I had mentioned previously, firstly, amblyopia and the need for glasses need to be excluded and treated. Amblyopia is treated by eye patching and myopia is treated with glasses. Some types of intermittent exotropia may benefit from orthoptic exercises to strengthen the convergence mechanism of the eyes. Ultimately, if the exotropia becomes constant, surgery is required to correct the alignment. In summary, intermittent exotropia is one of the common causes of squints in childhood. Initially, it starts as an intermittent squint and then it can become constant either in later childhood or in early adult. Why is early diagnosis important? One is to make sure that we exclude amblyopia as well as any need for glasses. And secondly, early diagnosis is important to monitor the control of intermittent exotropia. I hope you have enjoyed this session on intermittent exotropia and have a better understanding of the topic. Goodbye.